Last time, we learned how to use UART communication to send values from our computer to our PSOC. This time, we're going to learn how to do it the other way around. We're going to set up some code where the PSOC will wait until it gets a value from the computer, and then it will start to send values back to the computer. Meanwhile, our Python code will be programmed to send one value to the PSOC and then to listen until it has received all of the values that the PSOC has to send. Once we have this set up, we'll be able to use it to observe exactly how the slider motion is happening with our rack and pinion and with a particular set of control gains. Let's start with the PSOC code. Up at the top, let's create a new variable i. It will be an integer. We'll use the variable i to loop through a number of values which we will send back to the computer. In this case, we'll send 10 values. So we'll write a while loop that will execute while i is less than or equal to 10. If we want i to be the value which we send to the computer, we need to actually make it an unsigned 8-bit integer. The command to send a value over UART is put char. After we send a value, we'll put in a little delay. Let's make our delay 200 milliseconds and then we'll increment i. Program the PSOC. Now, back in our Python code, we'll create a loop to read 10 values from the PSOC. Now, in order to read these values as numbers, we need to use the same trick that we used when sending values. We'll create a variable and set it equal to byte array, where the byte in the array is the value read from the serial connection. Then, to make sure this is working, we'll print A. When you run this code, you should get the values 1 through 10 printed out on the screen because those are the values that we're sending from the PSOC. Now we can test and make sure this is working correctly by sending other values besides 1 through 10. Let's create a new variable up at the top called j, also an unsigned 8-bit integer. Now, in our loop, we'll start by setting j equal to 1 also but we'll increment j every time by 10, and then we'll send the value j. Program the PSOC, and then run the Python code. This time, we should get the values 1, 11, 21, and so on. In fact, we should get those values every time you run the Python code. Since we've made our PSOC code loop around and every time through the loop, wait to get a value from Python and then send 10 values. Every time PSOC has finished sending its 10 values, it goes back to wait. We can then run the Python code as many times as we want to test the PSOC code. Now, let's suppose that I would like to take each of those values that we're receiving from UART, and I want to save them so that I can, for example, plot the values. Let's see how we might be able to save all of the values that we receive over the UART connection. Let's start by creating some new variables that we can use here. We'll create an empty array called b by setting b equal to some square brackets. Now we can use the Python function append to every time in this loop add a new value onto the list of values held inside b. Every time through the loop the value we want to append is the value of a. Now run the code again. 
As before, we get the list of values sent over the UART connection. Now, if we do print B, we can see that B is a single variable that holds all of the values we got from the UART. Next, I'd like to plot this data, and here's how we're going to do it. We're going to add some code to the our Python code to save all of the values in B in a text file. First, go to the folder where your Python script is saved and create a new empty text file. Save this text file as data with a capital D. Now, back in our Python code, after the serial port is closed, we'll start by opening this new data file. We'll do open data.txt and then comma w. W is for write. It means that we're opening the file in order to write to it. Now, we'll create a loop that executes the same number of times as our previous loop. Every time through this loop, we will write to the file a value. In Python, the way you write a value is by first including a marker that indicates what kind of value you're going to write. Percent %d is the marker that indicates that I'm going to be printing an integer. I follow that percent %d with a forward slash and the letter n. Forward slash n means go to the next line. Now, after the closing quote, I put percent %b and then in brackets i. This line says write to the file an integer followed by a new line. And the integer that you should write is the ith element of b. We'll increment i. And then after the loop is finished, we'll close the file. In Python, closing the file is a really important part of the code. The write to file won't be successful if you don't close the file. Now let's run this code. You should still get the numbers 1, 11, 21, and so on printed to the screen. But now, if you go back and open up the data text file, you should see those numbers printed to the text file as well. Copy these numbers and then open up Microsoft Excel if you have it. If you don't, you can probably also use Google Sheets to do this. Paste the numbers into a column. Then enter the numbers 1, 2, and so on in the first column. Now, highlight these two columns and go to Insert, and we're going to insert a scatter plot. So here we have a plot of the values that were sent to us over the UART. Now, with these numbers that just increment, this isn't particularly useful to us. What we really want to do is run our position control code and send the value of the encoder count over the UART connection. We want to save all of those values into a text file and then plot them here. That way we'll be able to see much more precisely how the motion happened. Back in the PSOC code, take this code that waits until we get a value from the computer and put it outside the while one loop. We want this to be the very first thing that happens inside of the for loop. This will make the PSOC wait and do nothing until it gets a number from the computer, which will indicate to it that it should start the motion. Comment out the while one loop. Now copy the put char line and paste it down here where we're printing to the LCD screen.
Instead of putting the variable j over uart, we want to send the value of count, that is the current position of the rack and pinion. Do this in both of the two positioning loops. Also, let's reduce the amount of time allowed for each position from 5 seconds to 2 seconds. This will make our data easier to manage. Now we have a problem with the way we've written this code. Remember that we can only send a value between 0 and 255 over the UART. But our count value is not between 0 and 255. Our count value could be anywhere from 0 to 3000, which is the count value when the rack and pinion has moved all the way to its end position. In fact, we know that our two positioning numbers are 1000 and 2000. So only sending a value between 0 and 255 will not be sufficient. One way we could deal with this is that we could take the number that we want to send and assume that it is actually a 16-bit value. Then we could divide that number up into two 8-bit values send both of the 8-bit values, and then when we receive them on the other end, reassemble them into a single 16-bit value. That's what we're going to do here. We'll create two new variables called val1 and val2. These two variables will hold the two 8-bit values that come from breaking up a single 16-bit value. So both of these values will be unsigned 8-bit integers. Now, down here, before we put char the count value, we want to split up count into two 8-bit values. Here's how we do that. Val1 will be equal to count divided by 256. Now, this division is an integer division. That means that if count is equal to 256, val1 will be equal to 1. If count is less than 256, val1 will be equal to 0. Since val1 is an unsigned 8-bit integer and not a floating point, we cannot have any decimal values. Val1 will not become 2 until count has become the value 512. Now we can set val2 equal to count minus val1 times 256. So, suppose that count has the value 1000. Val1 would hold the value 3. Then, we would take 3, multiply it by 256, and subtract that from 1000. So that Val2 would be left as the value 232. Using this algorithm, Val1 and Val2 will both always be 255 or less. We can then reconstruct the actual value of count after we receive the two individual bytes on the other side with the Python code. Now, instead of sending count, we're going to send Val1 and Val2. Now, I'd like to have a little bit of delay between these two send operations, but I don't want to add more delay to this loop. So I'll take the 10 millisecond delay we already have and put it between the put char val1 and the put char val2.
Now I'll copy this code that we just added. and paste it into the second loop. Program the PSOC. Now, in the Python code, we're going to need some more variables to read both the high and the low bits and then reassemble them. So let's create some variables up here, A, B, C, and D. Copy the line that reads a value A and we'll read a second value B. And then we'll use C as the reassembly of the two bytes A and B. Here, we're going to put the reverse operation that we put into our PSOC code. Let's not print a value to the screen, because we want this code to run really fast. D will be the variable that holds all of the values C that we calculate. So we'll do D.append, and we'll append D with C, the reassembled 2-byte value. Copy this loop and then paste it so that we do the loop twice. We need to run both of these loops 200 times to match our two second long move. Then we want to write the D value to our file and we'll need to do this 400 times in order to account for both moves. Now, slide the rack of the rack and pinion all the way to the right, hit the reset button, and plug in the external power supply. After you've done that, run the Python code. After you get the little chevrons at the end of the script, Take a look at the data file. The data file should have about 400 values in it. Copy these values. Then go back to the Excel file. Paste the values in the B column. Then I'll add a new row where we can keep track of what these two columns are. The B column is position and I want the A column to be time. Time will start at zero and it will increment in 10 millisecond increments because that's the amount of time that we're waiting in each loop of the control algorithm. Drag this Drag these cells down so that we fill up the time column. The time should end at 4 seconds approximately. Now let's delete this chart and let's replot this. Copy, highlight the two columns, and then insert a scatter plot. This scatter plot is showing the path of motion of the rack. You can see that we first made a move from position 0 to position 1000 and then a move from position 1000 to position 2000. You can also see the overshoot and the oscillations that we have. If we want to zoom in we could create another plot that only includes some of these values. Highlight the values up through approximately row 80 and insert a scatter plot again. Here we can clearly see just one move, the move from 0 to 1000. In the next video, we'll be learning how to use this plot to compare one set of control gains to another set of control gains or one kind of control algorithm to another kind of control algorithm.